The slaying of Patrice Lumumba, deposed Congo Premier, touches off worldwide demonstrations, small groups of students and others, as here in Chicago and in London. Credulous pawns, it is believed, of communists and their dupes in deliberate organized attempts to undermine democracy and the United Nations. They hardly speak for the rank and file. In Moscow, where such scenes are rare unless propaganda is served, demonstrators converge on the Belgian embassy, attacking the Belgians and Dag Hammarskjöld, even as Russia withdraws recognition of the Secretary General. Here is the symbol of the turmoil in the Congo, the late Patrice Lumumba, the left-leaning nationalist agitator, head of the Congolese national movement which catapulted him to the premiership. But in two months he was out, deposed by arch-political rival President Joseph Kasavubu, who accused him of pro-communism and of creating chaos. Earlier, Lumumba visited the UN with his pro-red vice premier Antoine Gizenga, who later set up a separatist regime which the Kremlin supports leading President Moise Shomba of the secessionist province of Katanga to state that it threatens a Korean situation in the Congo. And it was in Katanga that Lumumba met his death. He shown in last pictures when he was flown in for detention, later to be slain by tribesmen, touching off the new crisis. At the United Nations in New York, demonstrators reflect the chain reaction of tension as the Security Council prepares to debate the Congo crisis. The boycott of Dog Hammarskjöld by the Soviet Union and its demand for withdrawal of UN troops from the Congo are pressing matters of the moment. Mr. Hammarskjöld is to stand firm, informing Russia he will not be driven out of his post, that he means to stay as long as he's needed. Then the council hears American Ambassador Adlai Stevenson defend the Secretary General and the UN Congo peace effort. We believe that the only way to keep the Cold War out of the Congo is to keep the United Nations in the Congo and we call on the Soviet Union to join us in thus ensuring the free and untrammeled exercise by the Congolese people of their right to independence and to democracy. Soon afterwards comes the violently unexpected. A demonstration breaks out in the spectator's gallery, interrupting Mr. Stevenson. Officials call it the worst outbreak to occur at the UN, touched off as if on cue by rioters who are joined by others who burst through the doors from the corridor outside. The News of the Day camera records the tumult that ensues. demonstration quelled, Mr. Stevenson says. Mr. President, may I say that I deeply deplore this outrageous and obviously organized demonstration to the extent that Americans may have been involved. I apologize on behalf of my government to the members of the Security Council. Later the same day at his Washington news conference, President Kennedy meets the Congo issue with firmness, adding the prestige of his high office to support for the United Nations, pledging defense of the charter by opposing any government's unilateral action in the Congo. The United States has supported and will continue to support the United Nations presence in the Congo. The United States considers that the only legal authority entitled to speak for the Congo as a whole is a government established under the Chief of State, President Kazavubu, who has been seated in the General Assembly of the United Nations by a majority vote of its members. The United Nations offers the best, if not the only possibility, for the restoration of conditions of stability and order in the Congo. The UN upheld at a new hour of crisis. 